So for the last piece of the puzzle, before we start assembly of the bag, we want to shift our focus to the handle attachments. So these are known as the shaps, which is going to be the interface between the handle and the bag. So in your pattern pack, you'll recognize these two pieces here. I've cut out full thickness, so two millimeters, a piece of my vegetable tanned leather mirror ring. And what I did was actually attach a little bit of sticky. Adhere that to the flesh side, cut out, and then just peel it off and use it on the next one. Just makes it a little bit easier, especially if you've got a waxed finish on the front, very difficult to stick to that. This piece here is not actually a pattern piece, it's a, a template essentially. It's just to measure this top line here. But I've cut out two pieces of leather that are larger than that template, as you can see there. Then I've simply gone over it with uh, a roughing tool to roughen both sides. And because this is a wax finish, just uh, with a little bit of cloth, use some acetone or some nail varnish remover, and that just destroys the wax and oils on the surface. Just makes it easier for the glue to adhere to. So that's just one thing that you can do. Next we have some rivets. Now these are solid brass rivets. The stem measurement is 16 millimeters, head measurement is nine millimeters, and the stem thickness is five millimeters. Of course, I'll link these in course supplies. And I'm also going to reinforce this particular one with some non-stretch nylon tape as well. So taking our handle attachments, I'm gonna add a crease line to them now, just using an adjustable crease. Now we don't need to crease the underside or do anything to that. All we're gonna focus on is the top side. And if you're in any doubt which is the top side, it's the side with the hole in it, okay? So the four millimeter hole there. So I'm gonna start with a cold crease first of all in this uh, vegetable tan leather. And I'm just starting back from this little neck here. This is gonna be wrapping around the D, the D ring, so. And the good thing about a cold crease is if you slip you can undo it quite easily by rubbing it out with a little bit of heat. So it's sometimes good practice on tricky curved objects. So just crease with a cold crease first of all, get an initial line in there. Then once you add a little bit of heat, the creaser wants to stay in the line created with the cold crease, okay? So right now you can see a little crease line on there. So let's add some heat to that. Quick test. And we're good. So taking the handle attachment and also this piece here, I'm gonna place both parts together, one on top of the other, the pattern on top. And right where the crease line is, just inside that, I'm gonna make a very small mark with a round all, okay? Just small enough for me to see. That's the limit of where I'm going to mark with my pricking iron. Any further than that, and I'll be stitching off the filler, okay? Which I'll be showing you in a moment. So that just lets us know how far we can mark up with our pricking irons, so we can mark up to it or just slightly before. And once you've prick marked all the way up to that little tiny mark there, I'm not gonna go any further than that. So if I do one more prick mark, it will be just slightly over. So I'm gonna keep it shy. Starting along the other side. Mark one, bring it along. The first thing I'm going to do is take one of the pieces, the handle attachments. I'm using a little bit of card here because sometimes the work surface can be a bit scratchy and on smooth leathers, we don't want any scratches. Now we can take a little contact adhesive and apply it to the flesh side where we just roughened. Now 
And I'm also going to add contact adhesive to our filler pieces. Now the glue has become touch dry, I'm going to reinforce this area with some nylon tape. So I've just cut the ends just shy of the edges. So I can place this just behind. And then once again, just go over with a little contact adhesive. But I'm going to avoid that center part. Don't want to add too much contact adhesive there. Because that's where our D-rings will be going. And same thing to the other one. And while we're here, I'm just going to bevel the edges. And starting just beyond the turnover there. We're not doing the base, which is this end. We want that to remain flat. As soon as you come onto the other side, just nip off and just a little top up there with a little edge stain. And because we used a little PVA in the mix there, what we can do is just take a slicker here, just a wooden slicker, and then just go around the top side only. Okay, the bottom side we actually need flat. So for that, I'm going to take a surprise, surprise, flat slicker and then just level off that surface, keeping it nice and flat. So now we've uh, finished the edges primarily. We'll do a little bit more afterwards. I'm going to take the side that we prick marked and have the hole in. That's our top side, our primary side. And we're going to take that scrap piece of leather, which we glued on both sides. I've also gone ahead and added a little edge stain on the straight edge on the end. I want you to take your piece that looks like this, and we're going to make sure we place it over the correct side, the top side. Flush with the edges and the end. And you don't need to mark it with pen necessarily. Just a few swipes with the round all, and we can see where to place down our fillet leather. So I'm just going to lightly press that on there, make sure I'm not too close to the edges on this side. That's fine. Now I can go ahead and just press that in. And now, facing down, we can then trim this up. And we're using leather to cut up to here, so just be very careful. Nice light guide cut first of all, and then progressively firmer. Making sure you keep that knife and that blade nice and upright. And same as before, just a little edge stain. What project screams Leathercraft more than the traditional briefcase, the godfather of leatherwork? But creating such an icon has been beyond many beginners and those new to the craft for a long time, making the briefcase seem out of reach. Therefore, I've designed a simple pattern and an easy to understand video course specifically for those who only use hand tools, yet the results will show no compromise. Fine craftsmanship at its best, no skiving machines or splitters necessary. And as a bonus, 
I'm going to show you one really cool trick to add your logo to rivets and hardware for very little money. So now you can sign your hardware just like the biggest luxury brands out there, helping your work to stand out from the crowd. To watch this course now, head to leathercraftmasterclass.com or tap the link in bio. Hi, my name is Philip and this is a Leathercraft Masterclass.